So welcome all. And uh, well, for those who don't know me, I'm Mariona Sanz, the, the Senior Project Manager of the Strengthening Media and Society Project. And uh, for those who don't know the SMS project, it's a um, Danish government-funded uh, media development and press freedom project that covers 12 countries in four regions, Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East, Northern Africa. And it has four, four, four uh, core focus points. The first is the development of uh, digital strategies that can assure the financial and editorial independence of, of media. The second is the promotion of innovation in these newsrooms. The third is the empowerment of women media leaders to ensure gender equality in the newsroom and in the news. And finally, the joint work on media freedom to assure that media can operate freely in, in, in these countries. So let me just, um, um, well, <laughs> leave it to Juni, who will uh, present Asha Phillips, the, the speaker that we have today. So Juni, I leave it to you. Thanks a lot, Mariana in Barcelona. Um, hi, everybody, and welcome. This is uh, Juni here in Singapore, um, Mariana in Barcelona. And we have about uh, participants from 20 countries signed up. So you know, hopefully, everybody is able to join us in the next uh, hour, an hour and a half. OK, and uh, to hear Asha talk about um, measuring and identifying stories and comparing stories across Facebook. OK, so we have something like 15 time zones covered, and therefore, we hold our webinars uh, at this time, so that we can cover everyone from Mexico, where it's about 8 a.m., and uh, all, all the way to Papua, where it's about 11 p.m. right now. Uh, so it's it's a it's a huge time zone, and we have a huge swath of folks from from all over who've been attending uh, this series, this webinar series, which is uh, year long. So we'll have themes uh, in the coming uh, months about you know media freedom, and as we've already seen some topics on social media strategies and distribution and verification, web research skills, uh, and in, in time to come, editorial leadership as well as uh, safety of electronic data as well as personal safety. So you know, look out for our uh, various announcements. Uh, you will be receiving you know uh, periodic uh, webinar uh, announcements, uh, invitations to take part. So welcome everyone. I see you know some uh, old friends here who've been uh, loyal uh, participants in our webinars. Uh, Karen, for example, Edith, uh, we've, we've had some uh, regular joining us uh, over the months, the last few months. And of course, we've had some new faces as well. So, you know, please feel free to say hi in the chat uh, and um, say hi to everybody, introduce yourselves. Okay. So, very quickly, today's uh, session, um, we'll, we've, we've seen the welcome by Mariana, who's the Senior Project Manager of the Strengthening Media and Society Program. Uh, and then I'll run through, you know, this series uh, and the session format and also a quick overview of this uh, webinar platform. We've picked this webinar platform because it's really easy to use. Okay, and I'll uh, just quickly go through some of the um, features. So you will have something similar like this in your window. Okay, maybe with not so much detail, this is a presenter window, but uh, you can see the various uh, attendees uh, coming online. Hi, Kimiko. Kimiko is uh, from uh, NHK Japan, but she's uh, based in Bangkok. And I see uh, folks like uh, Tehala, who's in Malawi. We have good representation from South Africa, from um, Kenya, from Ghana, and of course across Asia, uh, Colombia, Mexico, uh, and the Philippines. Okay, so welcome everyone. We've got more and more people coming online now. Uh, in this window, okay, we've got the attendee list here, uh, and um, uh, we can I can change this layout, and I will change this layout later on to maximize the, the space uh, where you can see our chefs slides and, and live demo. She will be sharing out her screen. Uh, this, this is the chat area. There is a really cool translate feature here. So if you'd like to see uh, chats in your uh, own language, you can click on the translate tool uh, and uh, you know, choose the flag of the country or the language that you wish to have it translated in. You can type in that, uh, in that the box you know, in your own language, and it will translate it into English for us using Google Translate technology. So that's a pretty cool feature to have, especially if we have uh, non-English speakers. OK, it doesn't unfortunately uh, translate speech into your language, but uh, it, it does text, so that's uh, pretty good. 
a good start already. So I think that's about it really for, for the features. Um, we will encourage, uh, Asha is happy to take your questions during the presentation. So if you have questions relating to what she has just talked about, feel free to type them in the box below. Okay, and uh, later on during the, you will have question and answer time as well. So you will be able to uh, ask uh, your questions uh, during the, the 20 minutes or so reserved for Q&A. Okay, so um, yeah, let me introduce Asha. Okay, Asha, and uh, I've known Asha for about over five years now. Uh, during the time she was based, uh, she's been based across Asia in Vietnam, in, in Hong Kong, and now she's in Singapore. Uh, however, today she is in uh, Perugia and Italy. Okay, so she's all the way in Europe, uh, and uh, and Marena's in Barcelona, and I'm in Singapore. She, um, Asha, we're very lucky to have her. Uh, this this uh, crowd tangle is part of uh, the Facebook journalism project, uh, and we hope to have Facebook come on um, later this year to talk more about it. But uh, today, Asha will talk about uh, crowd tangle and how to use crowd tangle to source for stories, measure stories, and see how. Uh, they're performing across, uh, across social media. Um, Asha herself has, uh, comes from a broadcast background uh, in Australia, and then she became one of the pioneering uh, editors at, at Storyful, which was the, uh, it's the first global social media newswire, which was subsequently acquired by News Corporation in 2014. Uh, and now she leads partnerships for Crowd Tangle in Asia Pacific and India. Uh, and Crowd Tangle was uh, acquired uh, by Facebook just uh, in November, December last year. So uh, that's again, if, if uh, she seems to have a habit of you know joining uh, startups, which then be become acquired by big companies. So you know to join the next big thing, uh, follow Asha closely. Okay, so um, Asha, if you would just switch on your mic and your video. Okay, Asha's coming on, and let me. Yes, yes there she is in Italy. Okay, and I will hand it over to, to Asha right now. Thanks, Asha. Thanks, Junie. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks, Junie, for the lovely introduction. Um, so I am in Italy right now. I've just come off the back of the International Journalism Festival in Perugia, um, which was fantastic. And uh, a lot of the discussion at the festival um, was around social media, how you can use it to find content, and also just to understand what you, you know, how you can optimize social media as um, both on the discovery and also the distribution side. So today, what I want to talk about is um, a brief overview of CrowdTangle. Um, some of you may have never heard of this tool before, um, so hopefully this is a really good introduction for you. Um, I've had a look at the attendee list and it looks like currently no one that's joining here is using the tool. You may have seen it though um, um, from some of your colleagues um, who have been using the tool. So hopefully this will give you a good sense of what it is um, and I'll also explain to you how you can get access to it um, since we're now um, part of Facebook. So I'm just going to um, switch off my video so I can share the screen with you so you'll get to see um, in more detail. Okay, so the idea behind CrowdTangle is simple. Um, essentially, we built a tool to make it easy for you to monitor what's happening across social media, to track trends, and to also track the performance of your content. So as we, um, you know, as journalists um, think about what we've you know, what we're meant to do with these social media platforms. The, you know, one of the key things that I've found as a journalist um, is that you do actually need assistance from a third party tool to both post content and measure it and optimize what it is that you're doing. So CrowdTangle is something on the measurement side and the discovery side. We're not a tool for publishing, um, so we don't allow you to publish um, onto Twitter, onto Facebook um, from the tool, um, but it is much more on the side of discovery and also then verification. So we are a free platform now because we are part of Facebook. So in January this year, we were um, officially acquired by Facebook and we became a, a, a Facebook tool. And part of that acquisition meant that CrowdTangle would now be free to publishers who use Facebook. Um, as a distribution platform. 
So firstly, um, you know, that, that means basically that it opens availability to everybody who previously maybe could not afford to use the tool, who didn't have any budget or resources for such a thing. And um, as Junie mentioned, Facebook has this um, very big focus on journalism and on media this year and going forward. And we are part of the Facebook Journalism Project. And part of the um, reasoning for putting, uh, sorry, for making CrowdTangle free is to give more tools and resources to journalists. So I'll, I'll explain to you at the end how to get access. Um, but just to know that, <clears throat> excuse me, as, as all of your organizations are media publishers, you will get access. Um, now we're a cross-platform tool. So we look at Facebook and Instagram as well as Twitter and Reddit. So even though we're actually officially now part of Facebook, we still offer insights and metrics for non-Facebook platforms. And that's not going to change. So that's a great thing because Obviously, um, for every different country, and I know you're all working across various continents, for some of you, Twitter will be the number one place where you find news. And it might also, might also be the number one place where you as a journalist share your stories. And then for others, Facebook will be the bigger platform. So the great thing is, is that um, with CrowdTangle, you can just use one tool to track all across um, those platforms. So I'm going to focus on um, three simple things that you can do through CrowdTangle to manage your social media presence in a smarter way and also to post better content that's relevant to your audience. Firstly, you need to be able to understand how to discover news through social media. And the, the reason that I, I talk about this is because social media has obviously all of your normal news sources because you yourselves as journalists and publishers are putting content out there. So you can monitor stories that are being shared by publishers, but you can also use social media to find content from citizens, whether it be user-generated content or to track content from um, authorities politicians, police, emergency services. So you can use um, CrowdTangle to easily track um, various groups. So as if you're using Twitter natively or even another tool like TweetDeck, you can curate lists of people or pages or content that you want to track. So with CrowdTangle, you do the same thing. So I've got an example here that you can see showing um, different lists based on topic type and country. So for example, we can create lists of politicians in South Africa, politicians in Kenya, or celebrities across the continent of Africa. We've got then different country-based lists like Philippines news, Philippines media, Philippines politicians, etc. So using those different lists, you can then see what those people are posting and what um, content is actually trending or going viral within those lists. So it makes it a very easy way for you to see what's performing well and what's trending. We also have search and discovery. So as with um, native Facebook search or Twitter search, you can use different keywords and hashtags to look for content. And you can use any language. So I've used an English example here of the recent um, bus blast with the German football team. And these are English keywords that I could do these searches in German, in Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, etc. So using CrowdTangle, you can then start to unearth content around news events. So when you know a news event has happened, for example, a, you know, a bus blast or a terrorism attack, you can search with different keywords and then sort the results by performance. So you'll see here on my next um, slide that we've got a few different ways to segregate results from a search or from a list. So right now, this is my um, German search that I just showed you, and I'm filtering the content by performance. So at CrowdTangle, we have a metric 
called overperforming. And that's just another word for trending content or viral content. So you can then segregate content by the performance and you can then see what's the top performing content coming from, you know, X, Y, Z publisher or a different um, source like a police department or politicians, etc. I'm going to show you in more detail how these searches work. I'm going to do a live um, screen share with you and, and run through how it works in a little bit more detail. So also in the um, search section of CrowdTangle, you can use it to look for content that's evergreen or viral. So obviously as journalists, um, we're often, you know, we're, we're reacting to stories. So when something happens, we're then obviously running into um, action to get content, to decide how we're going to be framing that content for our um, audience, and then publishing that content. When you don't know what you're looking for, because there's no news event that's happened, you can use search terms to just monitor what's trending in real time. And these will be done around verticals. So for example, if I want to understand um, what are the like sort of funny or heartwarming or really inspirational pieces of content that are trending on Facebook? I can use keywords like inspiring, amazing, heartwarming, or even other um, you know acronyms or slang words like LOL, OMG, etc. Again, in English or in any other language, and that will help me unearth content that's being shared across these platforms with these keywords. We often find that for those pieces of content that do go viral, whether it be, um, you know, a silly cat video or some real piece of journalism, people will use emotive words to find that content. And in English, often we find, again, different country by country, but using these keyword searches, you can find really great content um, that's, that's trending uh, online. And again, I will show you a live example of how that works. With Facebook, um, video is obviously um, becoming a very prominent thing for Facebook. And as publishers, um, I'm sure a lot of you have already started shifting to doing Facebook Live, or Facebook video on demand and posting a lot more of that visual um, and really engaging content. So with CrowdTangle, you can segregate um, your search around video. You can also look at your content and see which of your videos are actually performing best. Or you could look at your competitors and see what they're posting and what's working well for them. So right now I'm showing you an example of India news pages all in one list. And I'm then having a look at content based on the total interactions. Then that simply means the people that are engaging with that content who are liking it, commenting, sharing. And I'm looking just at Facebook videos. And what I can then do is find the pieces of content that perform the best within that list. So if I am from South Africa, I want to have a look at all of my key competitors and see what they're doing around Facebook videos. So maybe I can learn from them or maybe I can understand what they're doing well and what I could do better. And so again, I will show you a real time example of this, um, actually using some of your Facebook pages. Okay, let's have a little look at Reddit. Um, I'm not going into too much detail around Reddit, um, but just something to think about as and when you start using CrowdTangle, um, or even if you're looking at Reddit natively. Um, doing different keyword searches will help you also unearth content that's trending, or even um, just story give you story ideas. Now, there's a lot of discussion, as I'm sure of you know, I'm sure all of you know, around false news and fake news trends across Facebook, Twitter, etc. So with Reddit, a lot of false news um, is actually 
often starting with conversations on Reddit. So you could use the Reddit search within CrowdTangle to search for content that's being shared that might be false or misleading or fake. And again, just using those simple keyword searches, whether they be in English or any other language, you'll be able to see the conversations that are happening within these different threads and different subreddits. So at CrowdTangle, we're tracking thousands of subreddits internationally. So one example here is just doing a search for India subreddits and having a look at all the different conversations that are happening around India. That's obviously very broad, but that will help you bring in anything related to India, whether it be a story about Indian jet airways, whether it be a crash or some other controversy, um, uh, stories about sports or space or food or celebrities or entertainment, etc. So you can use this tool again to just really unearth content that might resonate well with your audience. CrowdTangle helps you understand the social landscape, whether that be geography specific or globally. So um, I've actually put, again, a couple of your Facebook pages um, from your registration to the one in the webinar. And I'm just here showing you um, how you can use CrowdTangle to have a look at how your pages perform comparatively. So this is, um, again, just looking at some of your pages, but you can use this to look at how your page performs versus your key competitors in the market. So that could be looking at Malaysian news specifically, it could be looking at all of the South African media side by side and seeing how your page performs. So here you've, you've got a ranking, then you've got your list of pages ranked from first all the way down. Now, it depends on how many pages you want to track, but you can track unlimited pages here. I've just shown you 10 um, for the sake of keeping it all on the screen. Um, and then you've got different metrics across the top here. So you can look at interactions. You can break out videos as well. You could look at the interaction rate, which is the percentage of your followers or your fans that engage with your content. You can see how many posts are put out there every day from each page, how big the pages are, as well as um, how quickly these pages grow and how many followers they're acquiring day by day. So again, I'm going to show you a live example of this that's more interactive that actually gives you even more data. But this is just a simple example of um, a, a way to actually get a better understanding of the social landscape across your market. The other important thing about social media is that you, and it's often not overlooked, is that you need to actually understand who your influencers are on those platforms who are sharing your content. So using CrowdTangle, you can search for people who post your stories on Facebook or on Twitter or on Instagram or on Reddit. So you can see then if those people have a large audience, um, maybe they're helping drive traffic back to your websites. Um, maybe they are influential politicians who are sharing your stories about politics or about you know, any other sort of hot topic. We have a Chrome extension that helps you do that in more detail. So the example here I'm showing you is a BuzzFeed story. And using the Chrome extension, you can see across all of social media where this has been shared and by whom. And even further than that, you can see basically a ranking of the top referrers. So you can understand who's posted it and where and how many people engaged with their piece of content or their share um, and how influential they are. So you can see then that interactions here, it's ranked by the most interactions. So you can understand if a certain person on Twitter, for example here, Priya Anand, has shared this link and she had 100 people reacting, either sharing it um, or, or liking it on Twitter. It was then shared by a bunch of different BuzzFeed pages 
and you can see all the different interactions that those pages had on Facebook and on Twitter. So when we're working with um, publishers, we often give them the Chrome extension for, for two reasons. One is to see the influencers, to see if maybe there are people out there that they should be partnering with um, from the content marketing perspective or even from the brand and marketing perspective. And also, just to understand, if you've got a, a, a real jump in traffic to your website, but you're not really sure why, you can use this to see whether it's because a lot of people started sharing that story on their personal um, social platforms. Crowdtangle is also a way for you to get the whole newsroom involved in social media. So it, it still surprises me um, when I go into newsrooms and it's 2017 and there's still a lot of resistance to using social media. And you know what, this is never gonna change. Um, there'll always be people in the newsroom that just have some resistance to being, um, you know, to being across platforms, to be sharing content all the time and to be tracking what's going on. It can be overwhelming for people and it's also, you know, it's not actually part of everyone's role in the current way newsrooms are set up. So with Crowdtangle, it can be an easy way for you to convince people in the newsroom to get active on social, but it's also a way for you to give them a tool without them having to actually do a lot of work. <laughs> and, I, and by that, I mean by sharing with them a very simple dashboard that they can use just to view what's happening across social. So this is one example you can see um, of a dashboard that will, it looks a little like a tweet deck. It's basically a way for you to track everything in the one place. Your Instagram, your Facebook and your Twitter lists all in the one place. And by sharing this with some of the, um, your colleagues who may not be um, very savvy on social, it just allows them to like very passively um, track what's happening on these platforms without having to manually do a lot of the work. Here's an example um, of how this looks in newsrooms. So it's actually built to be um, on a large screen up in newsrooms. So you can quickly glance up and see what's happening at any time. It could be used as a way for you to track your content and your competitors at any given time, or it could be used to actually discover content around an event. So we, we've actually done a lot of work um, with publishers around events like elections or little um, sporting events nationally or even locally. I mean, a couple of examples of huge events would be the Rio Olympics. Um, we've done a lot of US um, NBA and rugby and football and soccer, you name it. So these events um, are the perfect way for you to use these dashboards to get all of the newsroom sort of passively monitoring what's happening on social media. So this, um, the, the screen here you can see is from CNN, from ESPN, from BBC, um, from a couple of our partners in Asia as well. So these are, again, also part of Crowdtangle and once you have access to the tool, these will be available to you as well. So again, I, you know, I've been talking a lot about um, passively getting people involved in social or, or getting them aware of what's happening. And another feature of Crowdtangle is um, this notification system. And this is also a way for people to, you know, really passively consume content and to track what's going on. So in notifications, um, you can set up different alerts depending on your markets and what it is you're covering. So a couple of examples. You could have an overnight news digest um, that's showing what the top stories were overnight from South Africa, for example. If you're a sports editor, you might want to get um, a digest on Monday morning showing you the top Facebook videos from all of the sporting events over the weekend. And you can set these up in Crowdtangle. They're customizable 
Um, so you can add as many people from your teams on those as possible. Um, you can set them up for the different teams. You might have some for sports, some for politics, some for just the news team, etc. You can also um, set up the leaderboard digest and the leaderboards are that competitive um, table that I was showing you. So every week you could get a uh, leaderboard to see where your com competitors are performing better or worse than you and you can understand how well your content is performing as well. <clears throat> I see a couple of notes in the chat just about audio issues. Um, it seem, yeah, I'm hoping everyone can still hear me. Um, we'll, we'll continue for now, but um, worst case scenario, if we are recording, there, there isn't, there is going to be an audio on that recording, so people can listen back if need be. But apologies if if that's the case. Okay, just finally, before I start to do um, a live demo and deep dive into the tool, I just want to um, let everybody know how to get access. Um, so you need to go to our website, which is crowdtangle.com, and I'll show you that in a moment um, when I go live. I'm going to show you just how to fill out the form. So again, um, this is a free tool. Um, however, you cannot get access to it yourself. Um, we at CrowdTangle need to give you access and get you set up, and it does take some time. And now that we're a free tool, the demand is extremely high, so we do have quite a waiting list. So right now it's it's uh, April the 12th. Um, we're not going to be able to get anyone access until late May. We just have a list that's literally thousands long, um, but you will get access. So so please be patient. Um, I'm just going to now do a screen share and show you um, CrowdTangle in real time. Just give me a moment while I get set up. Okay, screen share is loaded now, so hopefully everyone can see that clearly. Okay, so this is what CrowdTangle looks like. When you get access to the tool, this is basically what you'll see when you log in. Um, at the top of the tool, you can see here that I have a drop down of a menu to go between the different. Um, uh, login. So I've got my Twitter, my Instagram, Reddit, etc. So for some of you, you may only want Facebook. It might be the most relevant for you. But if any of anyone else does want to access Instagram, you can um, have access here. So I'm obviously showing you my personal dashboards here, but you'll all have your own customized dashboard for your different news organization. Um, the dashboard itself um, is pretty simple to navigate. I want to just highlight a couple of things here on the left. So you'll see that I have lists here. So this is what I was talking about at the beginning, that you can create lists for whatever it is you want to track. So if I'm the Sunday Times, I might want to track all of my South African news, or I might want to track news across Africa. I might want to be able to track politicians in different countries so I can see what they're posting. So I can create lists here of different politicians on Facebook and then track everything in the one place. We actually build a lot of lists for you at CrowdTangle, so you don't have to do all of the work, but you have access to create lists as you wish as well. You can see as I scroll down, I've just got different lists for different markets. So I've got Malaysia here, I have some news lists for Malaysia and politics lists. I also have Mexico news, Philippines media, etc. So there's really no limit to what you track within these um, pages. And again, we also have the search section. And in search, you can create as many different searches as you want with different languages using different keywords and hashtags. 
I'm going to jump into just my Africa news list just to give you an example of what it is that you're going to do within the list. So I want to see how well my content's performing versus my competitors. So I'm going to select overperforming so I can see the best performing posts. I can select a time frame as well. So I could look at something like the most recent content over the last hour, or I could look back historically as well. Then I can select content type. So I could look at videos or I could look at everything. And then I can also specify and filter by language. Um, I can also filter it by just verified pages. So there's a lot of then, you know, a lot of freedom to search across different markets within different languages. What you see here now is a ranking of content from the best performing posts all the way down to the worst. So right now, this is the highest performing post. You can see here at the bottom all of the metrics. So I can see how well this post is performing, how many people liked it, that's 44. How many people commented? Three. Shared it? 31 people. And how many people reacted to it? And I can actually see what sort of reaction these people had. So did people love it, um, laugh about it, cry, or were they angry, etc. Over here on the left, I have a score. So this piece of content has a score of 6.5x. What that means is it's performing 6.5 times better than average content. And that average is a benchmark for this page. So it's the Sunday Times in the time period since this was posted. So this was a post from one hour ago. So I'm benchmarking content performance for this page over a one hour period. So essentially, what this allows you to do is to see how well your content performs relative to your average performance and how well your competitors' content performs as well. So all of this here that you see, you can download the data for and you'll get the raw numbers for all of that. You could also set up notifications, as I mentioned. So this is where you want to be able to share um, with your team members the top performing posts for your account or for your competitors over different time periods. We also have this section called the leaderboard and that's what I was mentioning before about your competitive intelligence. So I have an example here of some of the pages uh, from the attendees on the webinar. Just to give you an example of what this looks like. So I can see over time how these pages perform and I can understand what sort of information, um, sorry, what sort of content they're sharing and what is resonating with their audience. So I could see, um, you know, which page has the most followers, which page is posting the most, which page has the most interactions. And again, it's ranked by however many pages I put in the list. As I hover over these different uh, columns, I can see more information. So let's look at the Mail and Guardian. They've had almost 45,000 likes, comments, shares in the last week. But what is it that people are actually liking or commenting on? So you can see. Um, I'll just zoom in here so you can see it a bit clearer. People are mostly engaging with their link posts. There's 30,000 interactions on their links. And then photos, they have about 10,000 interactions on their photo posts. If you want to see what they're actually posting, you can look at the average daily post section and you can see over time what it is they're posting. So they post roughly. 50 times a week, and most of those are links. So they're very heavy on sharing their stories directly on Facebook. If you have a look at all the other pages up here, 
again, as I'm scrolling up, I'm able to see which pages are posting photos, videos, and links. So this is really important when you're trying to um, be a data-informed newsroom and understand what kind of content you should be posting and understanding what's resonating with your audience. I just want to highlight um, as well this uh, new tool that we have called Intelligence. And this is um, basically a more in-depth version of what I was showing you there with the boards. It allows you to look at, um, at any given time how pages are performing comparatively and it visualizes it for you. So I'm going to use an example from the Philippines. If I want to have a look at some of the, the major um, you know, Philippines newspapers right now, I can pull in several of their Facebook pages and I can have a look at how they perform side by side. So what I'm seeing here is the total interactions on these pages over time and I can break down by post type. So right now I'm looking at everything, but if I want to see just Facebook videos, I can actually break down how many Facebook videos each of these pages are posting. So you can see here by this graph that the inquirer in the Philippines is leading in terms of the most engagement on their content. If I want to see what these pages are posting, look at post count. And I can see how many posts they do per day or per week or per month. I have different date ranges as well. So over here on the right, I can look back historically um, 12 months or even further into history, which you can't do very easily um, in Facebook Insights or natively on Twitter, for example. If I go down the bottom here, I get a little bit more information about the pages that I'm looking at. And depending on whether I'm looking at their posts or the interactions, I can see the percentage which each page represents as a total. So I know that Inquirer has, is basically the most active on Facebook, followed by Rappler and then Philstar. So as I'm looking at each of these different tabs up here, I can get the total count down the bottom for each. The great thing about intelligence is that you can share this as a report with your team members or download it for yourself. So you can share this as a link so people will be able to go directly to this URL or I can print it as a PDF or I can download the raw data as well. So social media editors, this is like the most essential tool um, and the most important part of CrowdTangle for you. Okay, I'm going to show you just one last thing um, before I open up to questions is our Chrome extension. So I'm just going to reload a web page. So give me a moment while we do that just in case there's any delay. <clears throat> okay, so you should be able to see now, um, I've opened up a new story. This is a slate.com article. I'm just using this as one example. It could be a story from any news media site could also be a link to a Facebook video or even a YouTube video, any URL. Using the Chrome extension, you can see where this story got shared. And if you remember, this is what, how I was talking about looking at your influences and looking at where content has been spread. So with the Chrome extension, it's going to tell you the total interactions across different platforms. So you can see that we have LinkedIn here as well. 
and it's going to load my social referrals. So that's going the most influential person, page or account that shared this story. So you can see it was shared a total of 217 times. It had roughly 80,000 different interactions and the total audience was 140 million. Now that is a total number of all the different followers or people that could have seen this post from the different link shares. Now I can see that it was shared across Facebook, Reddit and other platforms. I can see who shared it where and how many people engage with that piece of content. So again, why is this important? Many, many reasons, but probably the most important reasons for you as journalists is to understand where your stories got shared, if it got picked up by any other news media or if politicians shared it across different platforms. We've also seen this tool being used in the sort of fight against false news because it can help you understand if I'm looking at a false news story, let's say, for example, that this Slate.com article is actually false or mis, you know, misinformation. Using the Chrome extension, I can see who you know, gave fuel to this fire, who shared the story and where. So I could understand, OK, maybe it was shared on Reddit and a lot of people saw it and therefore shared it themselves on Facebook or on Twitter. I can click through each of these referrals and I can see what the conversation was around the story. So it can help me be informed about misinformation that's being spread and I can then track what is being discussed and maybe even find an original source of the misinformation. Okay, I'm, I'm going to um, pause my screen sharing and just check in to see if there are any questions specifically. Um, and, you know, I want to that just make sure I'm answering everyone's specific questions about CrowdTangle or even more broad, um, you know, social media questions. So please um, do throw your questions in the chat. Just while we're waiting, um, just uh, one thing I, I did forget to go through, but um, that's the how to get access. So on our website, crowdtangle.com, you can click on that link. There is a registration button and it's very simple. You just need to put your name in, uh, your organisation and your Facebook page as well. Okay, so a question about languages. So yes, Crowdtangle looks at content across all languages that are supported on the platform. So for example, Facebook, any, any language that's supported on Facebook, we do track. Um, so it's not every single language across the world, but it is in the hundreds. Um, so yes, it, there, are, there are basically no restrictions in that way. Um, okay, question from Maria. Philippine Star and the Newspaper Phil Star. They, okay, right. So, so question is, um, if you have two separate, um, you know, Facebook pages for different or social media accounts for the same brand, whether that's a disadvantage or an advantage. Okay, good question. Um, look, it really depends on your audience and on what your objectives are. But I think the general consensus is that you need to consolidate um, your social pages. Because if you have several pages for um, Philstar, you're cannibalizing and effectively spreading your audience out. So if you've got a, um, a sports page for Philstar, people, your sports fans will go to that Facebook page. But your sports fans might also read general news or they might be interested in politics as well. Um, and they'll either miss out on that news because they might not like 
your politics page um, or they'll just um, you know basically sit within an audience of one page and you won't be able to actually grow your followers in that way so I highly recommend having one combined social media account and if you feel like certain content is not relevant to your whole audience you can target the post for example if there's a story again about sports um, that's a very specific maybe it's an NBA story for the Philippines well I know that that's probably something that most of your audience would be interested in to some extent but if you feel like it's really only going to be interesting to an age group say you know 20 to 40 year olds you could target your post to that audience so that not everybody sees that post but besides that, the way the Facebook newsfeed works is that it will only serve stories to your audience based on their reading habits. So I, if I follow Phil Star on Facebook, as a, as a news consumer, I don't read any sports. <laughs> I read a lot of hard news stories, politics stories, and the odd like, um, you know, fashion story, for example. So if you post a sports story on Philstar and I'm a follower of Philstar, I'm not going to see your sports story because that's not in line with my reading habits. So yes, in summary, Maria, I think you should have one page. Um, okay, Karen, your question here. You had a situation recently where a shark attack story from 2015 resurfaced and was the most read story on a website. We assumed it was shared on Facebook. Is there a way to trace that? Karen, yes, absolutely. That is, that's where the Chrome extension is going to be your best friend. So if you, if you open that shark story on your website and use a Chrome extension, you'll see if it was shared recently on somebody's Facebook page or on Twitter and if it got a lot of traffic. And that's that um, example I showed you with the Slate story is it, that's exactly what happened to them. That was a story from 2015 that in January 2016 all of a sudden got a massive spike in web traffic and they couldn't figure out why. And it was because one page on YouTube shared that link and then somebody on Reddit started a little thread about it and that helped drive traffic back to their website. So the Chrome extension will, will be really helpful in that. Um, okay, Juni, you mentioned about registrations. So, um, if you're so when you're access, trying to get access to CrowdTangle, um, you need to use your organization's Facebook page and your work email address. Um, so, don't register like as an individual, it should be a registration for your organization. Once you get access to CrowdTangle, um, it's, it's for everybody. So, so Leachin, um, for example, once you get, once we give you individually access, you can share that with your social media team and it should be shared across um, the social media team. There's no restriction with how many people will access it. Um, that's up to you to um, basically decide within your organization. Gabrielle, thanks. I'm, I'm excited to, to give you access as well. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, Karen, you're asking if it can be accessed simultaneously. Okay, yes, good question. So CrowdTangle doesn't have a, um, a user limit, so you could have 100 people accessing your account your dashboard and it wouldn't, you know, like log anybody out. Okay, I'm going to, oh, Junie was asking about the top ranked list again. Okay. 
me find that. This one here. So, so this, um, we call this a leaderboard. So this is where you can see a ranking of where your page sits um, against competitors. So I'm using, again, an example of a few of your individual um, media pages. But the best way to use that is to create a list of your key competitors in market. So you might have your, your Mexico news list and look at your page in Mexico versus your key competitors. But you can also use it for any page. So if I'm a journalist covering um, politicians in, let's say, Australia, I could have a list of all the top politicians in Australia and I can use the leaderboard to see which one has the biggest audience. And it's a really easy way then to just keep track of not only what they post but how their pages perform um, over time. Any other questions? Okay, a couple more questions here. Okay, so Let's talk about getting access to the tool. Let me, let me do a quick screen share to show you how to get set up. Um, the most important thing is that you do not sign up as an individual. You sign up as a company. And you should just decide within your newsroom who is the best person to, to sign up for it. We only want one person to register. Not everybody needs to register for it. If I look at Philstar, and I'm the social media editor, I should go to CrowdTangle and sign up for it on behalf of Fieldstar. But then if my colleague, who's also a social media editor, wants access, she doesn't have to sign up for it. Once the access gets done, she'll have access as well as me. I'm going to just, again, quickly screen share so I can show you how does that work, how that works, sorry. So <clears throat> firstly, okay, when you go to our site, you will see here, um, this is the front page at crowdtangle.com. You click on request access, and this is where you can sign up. So I can put in my name, et cetera, et cetera. Put in my company, industry, so I'm in media. Where am I in the world? I can maybe pick Middle East. How big is my Facebook page? So this is important as well. Um, to, to let us know how big your page is, and then I need to put in my Facebook URL. So, you know, whatever it is, facebook.com slash BBC News. And then here um, at the end, there's a little section called Facebook Partner Manager. So this is, if you currently work with Facebook um, as a partner and you have someone at Facebook that you know that you actually are working with, for maybe instant articles or live video, you can put their name in here. If you don't have anybody, that's totally fine. I would recommend that you just put in my name, Asha, and maybe you could just, if you remember, put in webinar, Asha webinar. So I'll know, I mean, I have a list of your um, names from the webinar anyway, um, but if you put this here, I'll be able to track for you. And then you just click request access. So again, 
don't tell everybody in your organization to, to do this because we don't need multiple requests for the same organization. Just have one person do it. Um, and once you get access, um, basically you can um, sign in yourself and then you can add other people from your team. Basically, um, you'll all access the same dashboard. So again, um, let's use the example of BBC. It's a very, very big news organization. They have multiple dashboards for different teams. So for the sports team, they have one dashboard. For the um, news team in India, they have their own dashboard. But if you're a journalist within that team, you're accessing the same dashboard. It's not an individual login or an individual dashboard. So that makes it easy because you can all share the lists and the searches that you do, but it's just going to be shared within your team or within your organization. Um, so ho hopefully I've clarified that. I know there's a couple of, I see a couple of other questions in there just about registering different brands. Um, you can sign up as a group, not as individual brands. Um, that's totally fine. Um, anyway, at the end of the day, you'll get, we're going to give you access across the brand, so that's no problem. Now, um, Gabrielle, you said you tried to register yesterday with your email address and you're waiting for an answer. Yes, so when you register, it goes into our system of requests. You don't automatically get access. So right now the waiting time is around one and a half to two months because the, the list is massive. We, we have thousands of requests. Um, I'll do my best to speed that up and give you access quicker, um, but there is a waiting time at the moment. Um, Nini, you said you put your request in without your name. Can I go back? No, unfortunately you can't go back. Um, you can try and submit a request again with your name in it. I definitely recommend that you fill out all the details um, just so it's easier for us to know who's registered. Um, Sherry, you asked why does it take so long to get access? Is there a vetting process? Okay, two, a couple of reasons why it takes so long. One is very simply the fact that we are a small team. Um, there is only six of us that are managing partnerships um, across the world at CrowdTangle, so it's a very small team. We customise every dashboard. So whenever you sign up, you get either me or my colleagues personally building the dashboard for you and doing training with you and your team. So. We do that on purpose because we want people to know how it works and to really, you know, make the most of it. So resourcing is just one issue right now. Because we're free, we have thousands of people asking for access and we are prioritising. So the vetting process is you have to be a publisher in the news space. Um, so you, that's fine, you are. Um, and then it's just simply we're trying to get through um, the pages that are the biggest first and onboard those, and then we're just moving through the list as we go. Um, okay, Maria has a question. Do you have a study on how stories that normally appear on traditional media fare on social media? How do we present stories more interestingly with the same content from newspapers? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, if you go actually on our website on crowdtangle.com, you can see some case studies. Um, so we don't have, it's not, they're a bit more um, specific than, than your question, um, but you can um, get some ideas of how some of the more traditional newspapers have pushed into digital and used Facebook to do that. Usually um, two things with social, um, video and image content is by far the most engaging. And with Facebook in particular, video seems to be performing the best. So you need to think a lot about how you can maybe do some video content around some of your biggest stories um, using Facebook Live and um, you know, just making sure that you're giving 
as much context to the audience as possible um, through social. So um, Junie was asking about who's getting access to CrowdTangle. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so it's it's only available to newsrooms. So right now, um, like brands or corporate clients are not getting access. Yeah, so bef before we were free, um, obviously anyone who wanted to pay to access the tool could. So we were working with brands and, and corporate clients before. They still have access to the tool now that it's free, but we're not giving access to any new partners in the corporate space at this time. We will eventually, but we're prioritising news partners right now. Um, that's because... One, we traditionally have worked with newsrooms more than corporates anyway. A lot of us at CrowdTangle are ex-journalists, um, you know, myself included. And now we're part of Facebook. We're part of the Facebook Journalism Project, which is to support journalists and newsrooms globally. And so we're not putting any of our time to focus on big corporate companies who want CrowdTangle for free. We're trying to give it to journalists and newsrooms first and foremost. Um, because they have traditionally been the ones and still probably the ones with um, smaller budgets. Um, so we want to make sure that they get the most out of this free tool um, and um, get, you know, get value out of it. Yeah, we, we have, so I, was, I mean, this is why the, the, pro, the, the list is so long to get access because we now have requests coming in from everybody from brands to agencies, marketing agencies, ad agencies, um, you know, various corporate um, clients, as well as news, you know, entities. So th those brands will still get access eventually. They're just at the bottom of the list um, because the priority is with news. Um, so that's good. That's a good thing for everyone. <laughs> so I say um, again, you know, I, I hope to get to everyone here quicker and give everyone access really soon. I just say two months to keep expectations, um, just knowing that um, there are just so many requests that have come in before yours will um, and we, we do have to just go through them, um, you know, as best we can chronologically. Um, having said that, you know, all of you work for pretty big news organisations, um, so, so you'll definitely be part of the priority list. Yep, the sooner you sign up on our website, the better, <laughs> basically. I know I know some of you already have put in requests. I've seen them, so I'll, I'll get to you. All 
Maria, that's a good question. So question about one minute or two minute videos more popular among Facebook users. Um, look, to be honest, um, I, I can't say yes or no specifically because it's very different country by country depending on your audience. Um, I would say though that in fact it's not just the short videos that are popular. I think the longer, firstly Facebook Lives are extremely popular and they're generally you know, much longer than a two minute video. So they have more engagement. Um, and the longer you do your live video, um, the, the more engaging the content can be and the more time you give to the audience to actually come and join um, the live video. For the video on demand or, or you know, playback video on Facebook, um, I, don't think, I don't think the shorter videos are actually the ones that are most popular. I think it's actually the longer form videos. So with CrowdTangle, we currently don't have the data to separate the difference between a one minute and a 10 minute video, for example, to see the different engagement um, sort of broken out that way. You can see it because you can see the individual videos and understand which ones performed better, but it won't be segregated by the time of the video. Um, so your Facebook insights will give you that data though. So just one thing about um, CrowdTangle versus Facebook Insights. So they are different. CrowdTangle is, is looking at public data. So we don't take any um, data from you individually as a Facebook user or from your Facebook um, profiles or pages as a brand. So when you join CrowdTangle, you don't give us any authorization to take any data. So we're not getting insights data, meaning we don't show you reach, um, etc. We can't see your boosted posts um, or and we don't share that information with any partners or any other CrowdTangle users. But what's different about insights is the ability for you to do much more competitive tracking and get the data from competitors, like the public data, that you would manually have to find, which is very difficult. Also, um, CrowdTangle is really the only way you can search on Facebook. Native Facebook search is pretty bad. Um, it's not really set up for, for search, so you really do need a third-party tool to do search, and CrowdTangle makes that pretty easy. Um, any final questions? We have about 15 minutes left if anyone still has questions. And um, yeah, as we as we wrap up Q&A, um, Junie's just pulling up the audience poll so everybody can um, click on the poll here in your webinar screen to um, you know, give us a little bit of feedback. It won't take long and we really appreciate um, getting some feedback. Thanks, Aditha. <laughs>
<laughs> Mariona, yes. Yeah, I think you've now had a little taste of Crowd Tangle, so I know you'll all be anxious to get in. I just posted in the chat, just remember to go to the website to sign up. We also have um, a really great resources section on our website, which you can access at, even as a non Crowd Tangle user. You can watch all of the videos on there, um, read through our tips, etc., as you're waiting to get access as well. Uh, Rebecca, yeah, that's a good question. Um, sorry, I didn't explain that clear enough. Um, so let me maybe I'll just do a really quick screen share again, just or. or um, actually, no, I won't because I want to keep the poll there. Okay, when I was showing you the performance of content in CrowdTangle, it shows you a score so you can see how well the content performs. And then also you can see if it has, say, 44 likes, that'll be in black. Next to it in blue with a plus sign, it will show you a number, as you said here, as an example, plus 38. So the 44 in black means how many real likes it has right now. The number 38 in blue is telling you how many more likes it has than average. So you can see the breakdown of what a normal interaction is, so how many likes, comments, shares it normally would get. So you can understand then if your video gets 100 more likes than average or 100 more shares than average, then people are engaging with it more in which way. And that metric is what we use to get that relative score at the top. I hope that makes sense, Rebecca. Great, you're welcome. And, and again, on our resources page, we have a list of like frequently asked questions, a glossary of all the terms as well, um, and little videos to explain everything that I've gone through. So before you get access, feel free to go and have a look at some of those videos and really understand um, you know, how the tool works. Um, you'll probably be experts before you even get access. Um, we also do... So I mentioned when we give you access, we do training. On top of that, we also have one week. So as you get access, you'll all be invited to different webinars. You can do training. And they'll be sometimes very broad webinars giving you general training. Or it might be really specific. So how to use Twitter or how to use Reddit um, or how to optimize video on Facebook. So there is a lot of, um, we do a lot of different training sessions um, and we usually do them broken down by region. So we'll do um, LATAM or Middle East or Africa or Asia Pacific specific. Yeah. Any final questions before we wrap up? Please remember to fill out the poll if you haven't done so yet. Um, it's really valuable feedback for, for Juni and the team and also myself. <laughs> thanks everyone who's already filled those out. <laughs> yes, yes, thanks. Thanks a lot, Dasha. Yeah. Are there any um, last questions, everyone? Yeah, before uh, Asha has to log off. Okay. Um, here's the link again. All um, all videos, okay. All webinar recordings, uh, webinar recordings will be yeah, will be available uh, at this page, yeah, at the YouTube page below. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, if there are no more qu uh, questions for Asha, thank you very much. With perfect timing, we've uh, ended you know, right on the dot. Uh, thanks so much, Asha. I know you've been. Uh, Amazing! This has been an amazing presentation, and you've done this, uh, you know, while you've had your sore throat. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Thank you. Thank Hopefully, you everyone understood. <laughs> making, yeah, making yourself available. 
I think uh, Augustine uh, from Nairobi and Porcelain from Nairobi are typing. Uh, they're, what they're typing in the chat. Yes. Okay. I'll leave the room open for, for a few more minutes for, for those who haven't replied uh, to the poll. Okay. Uh, and um, yeah, it just leaves me to thank Asha for, for a really interesting uh, presentation. And uh, it's also fascinating to know that uh, news organizations have been prioritized in this. Um, the space of uh, crowd tangles roll out under Facebook, uh, and that brands are, are not uh, you know, currently being enrolled. New brands are not being enrolled. It, you can actually see the power of a tool like this for for brands and corporates. Um, but of course, news organisations uh, will have access. Uh, will the um, the the sales and marketing arms of media organisations also have access, or is it just editorial? Yeah, no, they do as well. So we have marketing teams or sales teams, you know, mm -hmm. some of the big media organisations that use it. So there's no restriction in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it could also be um, a way for news organisations, uh, sales teams as well, to get insights into how certain brands are performing across Facebook. And this also would be very uh, interesting information and value, very valuable data for uh, customers and clients uh, who are advertisers in the organization. So something to, to bear in mind as well. Again, a very powerful tool. Thanks, thanks Asha, for spending the time you know, all the way in Italy. Um, those, if there's anyone who will be at Publish Asia, when I first publish Asia in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia next week, uh, Asha will be there. It will be a chance to uh, see Asha there. I, I will be there as well. So you know, if, if anyone's there, uh, do come and say hi to us. <laughs> okay. Yes, Thank you, Asha. Yeah. Marena, thank you, do you, have thank you Asha. Say? Thank you for this uh, great presentation and and yeah, looking forward. Well, I I won't be using the tool, but I know that many of our participants will really have a a good and interesting time when when using Crowtangle. So thank you again, thank and you. see you all for, for our next webinar in May. Yes. Yes.